Tomo News presents Water Pollution. Most of the plastic in the ocean comes from these countries. Plastic waste is slowly but surely taking over the world's oceans, and the bulk of them apparently comes from just five Asian countries. A study from Ocean Conservancy estimates that 55 to 60 percent of plastic polluting the oceans comes from five countries China, Indonesia, Philippines, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uncollected and mismanaged waste on land accounts for about 80 percent of the 8 million metric tons of trash that flow into the oceans each year. Environmental organization Greenpeace claims corporations are also at fault for selling products in single-use plastic packaging, especially in so-called sachet economies like the Philippines. Various studies have shown that plastic pollution negatively impacts marine animals and may be indirectly affecting humans through the food chain. Fortunately, improving waste management practices in the five countries can result in a 45 percent reduction of global plastic waste leakage by 2025. In tackling plastic pollution, everyone has a role to play. From governments and big conglomerates to the people on the street, every bit helps. There's plastic in your water. A new study shows plastic has not only been polluting the seas and oceans, but also most of the world's tap water. Scientists tested water samples from a dozen countries on five different continents and found that 83 percent contained microscopic plastic fibers. The U.S. had the highest contamination rate at 94 percent, while Europe fared better at 72 percent. The microscopic fragments are believed to be from clothes, plastic waste, tire dust, microbeads and paint that have been flushed into water systems. Synthetic fibers shed from clothes and carpets have also been known to contaminate the air and eventually make it into waterways. Microplastics have been known to contain toxic chemicals, which could be released into the body when ingested. Many studies have explored the impact of microscopic plastic particles on marine life, but none so far focused directly on human health. With the current state of Earth's plastic pollution, though, somebody had better get on it. EPA accidentally releases heavily polluted water into Colorado River. The amount of heavily polluted water the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency accidentally spilled into the Animas River in Colorado while working on a wastewater treatment project has now reached 3 million gallons. On August 5th, a plug holding back contaminated water at the abandoned Gold King Mine was released by mistake. The water contains high levels of heavy metals and sediment, including lead, arsenic, cadmium, iron, zinc and copper. The polluted water flowed along the Animas River in Colorado and then into the San Juan River in New Mexico. At the current time, the mine is discharging anywhere between 200 to 700 gallons per minute of polluted water. Emergency settling ponds have built to try to contain the water and treat it. While fish have also been placed in the waters to check for harmful effects on local wildlife. In the meantime, farmers have been asked not to use the water, but the warning only came one day after the accidental release. Sewage plants leaking plastic beads into British seas. Here's some good news for a change. Looks like we've discovered a new source of ocean plastic pollution. According to a new report, sewage plants could be leaking millions of tiny plastic beads used for wastewater treatment into British seas. 55 treatment facilities across the UK use the 3.5 millimeter wide bio bead plastic pellets to filter chemical and organic contaminants out of sewage. Bio beads are used in the last step before treated effluent water is discharged back into rivers or the sea. Currently, no mechanism is in place to stop the beads in the event of a spill. Plastic microbeads kill marine life by blocking the digestive tract, but also as a result of exposure to chemical pollutants like DDT and PCBs that attach to the plastic beads in seawater. Here's why the Gulf of Mexico dead zone is extra large this year. Low oxygen areas appear yearly off the coast of Louisiana. But 2017's dead zone is reportedly the largest ever documented since records began in 1985. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration announced that this year's dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico measures 8,776 square miles, which is roughly the size of New Jersey. The 2002 dead zone covered nearly 8,500 square miles. But the past five years have seen the area cover no more than an area less than 6,000 square miles. Dead zones are caused by nitrogen and phosphorus, which are used as crop nutrients by farmers and washed into waterways by rain. 
Unusually heavy rains in the Midwest are believed to have washed away more nutrients from U.S. farmlands than usual, sending them downstream via the Mississippi River. Nitrogen and phosphorus stimulate massive algal growth in the Gulf that eventually sinks to the bottom and decomposes. This decomposition process uses up the oxygen in the water, which renders the area uninhabitable for marine creatures. Dead zones are usually temporary, dissipating during fall and winter. But the effects of low oxygen or hypoxic zones on certain species can be permanent, with studies showing it affects fish reproduction and stunts shrimp growth. Setting a federal limit on the use of crop nutrients may be one possible solution, but could prove challenging since it will need to be implemented in more than 25 states. Seabin device designed to keep the ocean clean. Australian surfers Andrew Turton and Pete Kaglinski, who are also best friends, decided to do something after they became frustrated with the amount of trash that was floating in the ocean waters that they spent much of their childhood playing in. The duo quit their jobs and invented the sea bin, which is what they hope will be a sustainable way to reduce the amount of garbage that is polluting the world's waters. Built from recycled materials, the sea bin is fixed to a dock with a water pump that runs on shore power. The pump brings water through the sea bin, which allows the natural fiber back inside the device to catch the floating rubbish and debris before water is pumped back out. Users have the option of installing an oil and water separator to the pump to clean the water that flows through it before the water is allowed to flow back into the ocean. The sea bin is lined with a natural fiber catch bag that collects floating debris. When the bag is full, it can be changed with another clean one and the collected debris can be disposed of responsibly. Turton and Kaglinski are trying to raise enough capital to turn the Seabin prototype into a reality. According to Australia's ABC News, crowdfunding has helped the two men raise $50,000 for commercial production, and a video of the Seabin in action has attracted more than 10 million hits online. This robot water snake hunts pollution on autopilot. Meet Lake Geneva's newest swimmer, the Envirobot, an autonomous pollution hunter. Gulp! The EnviroBot is four feet long and comprises several special purpose modules that constitute its eel-like design. The purpose of these modules are twofold. First, each has a small electric motor that lets the robot swim like a water snake. Secondly, each segment has a unique sensor for gathering a variety of data. For example, biological sensors contain tiny organisms or bacteria that react to the presence of pollutive toxins. Meanwhile, electrical sensors can track water temperature and chemical sensors test water acidity. More modules can be added as needed. The robot can swim on a route or make its own way through a body of water to find the source of pollution. And while it's very cool, we're not exactly sure we'd want it swimming beside us. Indonesia pledges a billion dollars in war on plastic waste. Plastic waste is a major global problem, and second only to China, the world's biggest source of the pollutant is Indonesia. Responsible for a massive 54,000 kilometers of coastline, the Indonesian government has vowed to do its part to reduce plastic in the environment, with a pledge to spend $1 billion on the problem. And it is indeed a global problem, one which the United Nations has declared a war on. Each day, more and more plastic finds its way into our oceans. As plastic does not decompose, much of it collects in the open ocean, driven by currents. One such concentration is known as the Great Pacific Plastic Patch. Another of these floating patches is larger than France. Scientists believe the entire mass of oceanic plastic could outweigh all the fish in the world's oceans in 30 years. And today's estimated 165 million tons of the stuff in our oceans is already getting into our food supply. So you know what to do. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Take a reusable bag to the supermarket, refill that water bottle, and avoid foods with excessive packaging. Do it for those future grandkids, yeah?